In this last training video for survey annotation, it's time to pull everything together. We've learned all the basic tools. Now we need to see how can we make a more complex label that reacts to changes in survey. For example, we have a flow arrow that points to a positive slope direction in, in our example here. And so how do we do that? So what we're going to do is we're going to build a series of text favorites, one for the length of the line you'll see demonstrated in this label, one for the slope of the particular line between the two shots, and then one for actual point elevations for our inverts. And then we need a text favorite for our size and type, which we've already done in a prior video. And so we'll take advantage of that particular favorite when we pull all of this together. So let's go ahead and build our first text favorite for our line slope or our slope of our 3D line. So again, go down to our place text, select our style, survey topo label, and then we're going to go into select field type. And we're going to go down this time to open roads linear 3D annotation fields. And in our annotation fields on our linear, we want to pick the length, the 3D length of our particular line. So I'm going to select master units, pick your units here of, of feet or metric, and then the accuracy. And I'm going to select OK. And I'm going to put in the prefix and suffix in the particular annotation group. I'm just going to use the value here just to show you a little bit of a different flavor. And so I'm going to select this and I'm going to go to save my text favorite. And with that text favorite saved, I'm going to come in and rename it. We'll call this line length 3D and press enter to accept that. Then we're going to do our next one, which is going to be the slope of the line. And so the same prop process, we'll go to our linear 3D annotation and we will find it under the line category under line slope. And so we'll select that. And we can put in percentage, rise, run, number of decimal places, a lot of different uh, ways that you can go ahead and show this particular number here, if you will. And so I'm going to do percentage format and two decimal places. And then you also have to be careful about the alternate limit where it switches from percentage to like a run rise. And so I'm going to set this to a really high value so that it always forces percentage. And then you also have the capabilities of a positive or negative. I'm not going to show a positive prefix in here, so I'll take those out and we'll select OK. And again, the, the slope equals and a space, I'm going to put all that in terms of the annotation group prefix. So I'll just save this text favorite. And once that's saved, then we can rename that as well. I'll call this line slope 3D for my example. And so now we want to go ahead and set up the elevation for our inverts. And to do this for our survey, again, I can come into our select field type, go down to our linear 3D annotation, and OK. And underneath point here, we have the option to pick our, our Z. And so you'll see the point there. And you can set the format, number of decimal places, etc., just like we had before. We'll select OK to that. And we'll select this, save that text favorite, and then I'm going to rename this one to point elevation and accept that. Close out of our editor. Now that we have our favorites built, we want to go over to our annotation groups again, plan, linear 3D, survey, and I'm going to make a new entry here we call this culvert. And we're going to right click and manage. And the first entry I'm going to take care of is the flow arrow. And so I'll do a new linear 3D annotation. I'm going to call this one flow arrow. And on our flow arrow, we, again, we can do what we did before. If I do, in, for example, a percent of 50, and that'll put it in the midpoint. 
and that's going to be a line and I'm going to use the same annotation symbology I did before for this example we're going to turn on our leader and then our arrow size I'm going to put it 0.01 and our arrow width at 0033 for Imperial and you can go go ahead and set this in a linear template or element template as well once that's done uh, we can take a look then at our rotation options uh, per, I want to change this to a what we call a positive slope that's important don't miss that and everything else we're going to leave as is we don't really need a line length here so I'm going to set that to zero and we're not going to place a cell and we're not placing any text and so if we do a fit view here at the center you're going to see now we have this flow arrow established uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in the entry for our length and so we'll select a new entry here add new linear 3d call this length and on our length we're going to again set this to percent of 50 tells us where it's going to put it we're going to be placing text our text that we're going to be placing is going to be our line link 3d and on that particular one we want to go ahead and set this to tangent now that we have tangent then we're going to go ahead and set our perpendicular offset value Once we have a perpendicular offset value set, we, we're not placing a line here. We can set this to zero. Make sure you pick your element template that you want to control for your symbology. Then we're going to put in a prefix. Let's say L space equals space. And then we want to put in our suffix, which is going to be a, a foot tick for imperial. And so now you will see an example of our length label. The next thing we want to do is set up our slope label. So I can go ahead and just uh, to simplify things, copy and paste this one. I'll call this slope. And everything there is going to be the same. We don't have to make any changes. And then on our tangent placement for our slope label, what we want to do there is go ahead and leave it at tangent and zero. But I'm just going to put this above the culvert. And again, this is just personal preference. So we have that set. And then we want to come down to change our prefix to slope. And we do not need a suffix, so we can take that off. And then on our favorite, we want to go ahead and select the line slope 3D. And if you're wondering the reason I have multiple entries in there, because I'm working inside of a DGN lib that's already included in my workspace, plus I'm using the same names that I had uh, in other DGN libraries that are delivered. I'm just kind of replicating what was already done, so just didn't want to confuse you. The invert in and invert out, and so I'm going to select that. We'll make a new entry for those. So that's going to be a linear 3D annotation. And on this one, I called it invert in, and on the location, I wanted to set it to points in start, and I've changed it to text and picked my particular element template. There's no leader here. On the placement, I've set it to perpendicular, and no line work here, no cell. I put in a prefix of invert in, and then I picked my text favorite of point elevation. And so at the very beginning of my previewer, uh, you'll see where that's at. Then we want to go ahead and make a copy of this. We're going to call this invert out. And on our where, we want to change that to end. So that's going to, in our preview, come out over here. We'll change our prefix to out. And that's pretty much it. So now we have those in. 
And then the last thing is, is the pipe attribution. So that's our size and type again, which we've already done one of those. So now we simply come in and we're going to say add new on your 3D annotation. And this one's going to be size and type, whatever you would like to call that. That's going to be, again, at the midpoint. So we can do a percent of 50. And this is going to be text. And we're going to place this at the proper symbology with our element template. There's no leader. There's no line. And there's no cell. Our favorite, again, is going to be our size and type. So we'll go down to our survey, size type label. And we're going to be tangential. So we'll set that. And then we need to set our offset. Minus 0.165. And so, again, pay no attention to the content of the label. Once this is annotated to the survey file, it'll retrieve the size and the type and place that appropriately. So once you have everything filled in, like we do here, we will save our settings by closing the Annotations Manager. We're going to go back to our Symbologies one last time, go to Linear, Existing, and if I go down to, for example, Drainage and Culvert, we'll go to our Properties, and on that one, we'll set our Annotation Group for our 3D to Plan, Linear 3D Survey, and Culvert, and now when we map our survey, we will see these particular results on all of our culverts. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.